Hello everybody, this is Ken here, and today this is probably going to be one of the last couple of vlogs that I'll be doing for a while, and especially for anything related to my experience at CSU East Bay, as I'll be honest, this is my last week before I'm going to start walking the stage t tomorrow for commencement, as in case um, I never told any of you folks yet, I am graduating from California State University East Bay with my master's in statistics from for the concentration in data science, which took me two years to complete. And so I'm just thrilled to be able to mark not just the end of my time at East Bay, but also to mark the end of my eight year journey in college, which included my time getting my bachelor's degree and doing my GEs and exploring my career options before settling on math and statistics. As I've been going to college since 2015, right after I left high school, so just given how much time I've been spending in college and how much I just never took a break from learning, it feels very surreal to be putting an end to it. As when I got my bachelor's degree, I thought I was out. I thought I was done. But then I realized that there's still more left for me in the tank to learn. And that motivated me to want to do a master's in statistics. As at the time, I was experiencing some disillusionment with my math major because I realized what I truly wanted to do. And so in a way, I was no longer interested in my math major and just doing applied mathematics, which got me to consider other career options, which included statistics. And uh, the part of me was unsure about whether or not I could do grad school or not because I was at this point where I felt that I wasted my life doing an applied math degree, only to find that it was still pretty useful in regards, and it gave me the direction that I needed to make my next move. As even though I no longer major in applied math or just using it as much now, it's still been really helpful for me. For it's through applied math that I learned about statistics, and through that that I had some wonderful professors who really helped me kind of sort of encouraged me to go in that direction and met all kinds of people that I've worked with who did that as well which motivated me to do a master's in statistics and now here I am graduating with one moment and I'll think that while I did feel hesitant about taking it a part of me was thinking why not because I'm young, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and so why not take advantage of the momentum while I still have it to go do a master's degree and just see where that takes me. It's almost like um, taking your long-held favorite car for a spin for the last time before you separate from it forever. That's what it felt like when I was going back to master school. As in, I didn't see myself going back to college, which is something I've been very familiar with for five years. And going back to it was like revisiting an old friend one last time again, as I made it really clear from the beginning that I wouldn't want to be doing anything else after I get my master's degree. I don't want to go up and get a PhD or something, especially for the time being though, as I've already been in school long enough to know that there's a lot more for me to be looking forward to besides just going to college. And before I even consider anything in regards to maybe more schooling or college, perhaps I should just take a break for a while and just really explore my options. Not just work, but maybe just get some perspective. You know, go go live life outside of college and just see where that takes me. And I think that's a good opportunity for that, for sure. So I guess for the time being, this is this is it for me. This is my last rodeo in college for a while and after tomorrow I'm done I'm gonna be done with college and I probably gonna move on to something more for that but even though I've made some pretty final decisions on just where I see myself moving forward I still have a lot to be grateful for in regards to my experience at CSU East Bay because when I started out going to the Master's Statistics at East Bay, I started out as a guy who didn't have much to think about in regards to you know, my time being in school, as while I did know that being in the Master's program meant that I was going to be around more mature, responsible students, 
A part of me also accepted that if anything goes wrong, I can always do the same thing that I did when I was doing my undergrad. Just go to class, do the lecture, do the homework, and go home. Just repeat that routine over and over and over again. It's what got me through undergrad when I just didn't have much opportunity to connect with the right people or just not much to do outside of class. And I was willing to do it again for grad school if it came down to it. Only to realize that it was a lot more than that. Grad school was a lot more of it. And it really brings into perspective the value of it's what you make of it as well, not just what you get in the end. As when I started to get into the swing of things with classes and so on, I came across a couple of students, uh, one of them being Lydia, who you, I just interviewed in previous videos, who introduced me to these wonderful classmates who end up being more than just people we should just study with. We ended up becoming friends. We started hanging out. We started networking, going to all these conferences, even starting the first student chapter of the American Statistical Association at CSU East Bay. And just all these things that really just added so much color and life to our college experience. For we didn't have to do any of this. I didn't have to be a co-founder of the ASA student chapter. I didn't have to be working as a TA for you know some of the stats courses offered at East Bay. And I didn't have to volunteer or hang out with people or even to be having these kind of connections I have. I didn't have to do that. But I did it anyway because I wanted something more out of my life than just what I expect in the end, which is simply a piece of paper or a degree. I want it just have a meaningful connection that I'm not going to get anywhere else. And it turned out to be the case as we not only did all that fun stuff, we also learned together too. I mean, I'm part of the R for DS online learning community where I'm learning all these extra stuff that isn't taught in class. That's just more of an enhancement of what we learn. All these cool R packages that I got to work with that make visualizations have a lot more variety than the basic ones that you learn in school. Whether it's these dumbbell plots that I've heard about where essentially you have this line that measures sort of the range of values for a variable and then you have your minimum and your maximum mark as dots. Kind of like a dumbbell. I'm not sure why it, actually I can kind of see why it's called a dumbbell plot because you have these two ends and then this long thing. Kind of like a barbell. You know if you've ever been to a gym. So and all these cool stuff that I would never have heard of had I not interacted or with or networked with people, my classmates, or even attended conferences and events outside of the classroom. So there's a lot of value and utility to that too. And it's one of those things that really has made my time in college brighter. Not to mention that it was a beautiful camp campus that I was on. I mean, East Bay is a lot smaller than, say, something a little bit more urban in downtown, like San Jose State, which nothing wrong with urban in downtown, but I just I appreciate it when you're in a school that feels a little bit small and is really beautiful, too. I mean, look at all those hills at CSU East Bay. They're just fantastic and full of these awesome hiking spots, for sure, worth checking out. I mean, it's just beautiful there, and if anything, even though I'm going to be graduating, if there's one thing I would go back for, it's definitely the hills, as I've only scratched the surface of just how much there is to the greenery that's on campus. And stuff like that, that really has been meaningful for me and has really made my stay at CSU East Bay a lot more enjoyable for that matter. And I guess another shout out would be the Department of Statistics as well. For they may be small in comparison to other departments on campus, but they are very supportive of us. They really care about your growth and just wanting you to succeed. I didn't feel like I was some statistic on a spreadsheet. I felt like I was someone who they generally want to help. I mean, there would be professors that I've talked to in my in my classes who have been, you know, encouraging me to try out different R packages, have been encouraging me to network and check out all these different jobs that are available in the Bay Area and beyond that. And all these wonderful opportunities that I've never even heard of had I not encountered them outside of class where there's this expectation, oh, do the lectures and stuff. So, and all that. And as a bonus, they were actually very supportive of us having an ASA student chapter. 
to the point where they even promoted that in their classes and even encouraged us to you know spread the word too beyond that and just just really appreciative just what we've done and all the things that we've done with them collaborating to make this asa student chapter come to life so it's just really amazing i mean you have all these great professors who are very knowledgeable and teach all these wonderful electives that allow you to sort of push the boundaries of what R is capable of doing for example data visualization with R class that data science course where you learn how to do R shiny which are essentially this dashboard technology that R has that allows you to make all kinds of dashboards and graphs and interactive plots that people can click on or even things like GG spatial which allows you to plot coordinates on a actual map geographical map which is useful if you're trying to get coordinates or just trying to get visuals highlighting certain things that you're looking at with respect to sort of the location of these points you know, using spatial coordinates like latitude and longitude on all of these wonderful things for two which I'll say are courses that you're unlikely to get anywhere else in other stats programs out there. And it's what it's all these things that I think really makes the program come to life and be meaningful. So if there's anything that I could leave you with for sure, it's that when it comes to a program like this, really make the most out of your time. Take some time to get to know your professors, ask them questions, or even just maybe ask for advice on different parts of building a career in statistics, because some of them have industry experience. Some of them have used to be students like you. So they're essentially the experts on these things. So they're a resource that you don't want to miss or avo avoid, and they can certainly help you with that. And also maybe get to know your classmates and maybe even try learning on your own a little bit i mean i do have for example a couple of our books that i still read periodically which aren't assigned reading but it's stuff that i i bought just so i can have extra tools i can learn on top of what i've learned in class to enhance what i'm doing especially when it comes to programs like this r for data science book a classic by hadley wickham and garrett rolamon which is a classic, which essentially dives into a lot of the cool data science stuff they can do with R and all these packages, whether it's string R or even dplyr, which comes with the piping operator, which allows you to sort of be able to um, have these neat code chunks where you're nesting functions within functions, which isn't necessary, but it makes it easier for to read. So that way you're not having function within a function within a function, which it still gets the job done, but it looks super messy. So, as well as just learning how to um, clean up data, especially missing data. So, these are just examples of books that I picked up on f from my own time in grad school, from all of these different conferences I've attended and these workshops on R that I've done, whether it's through the student chapter or even through a lot of the conferences I've attended through ASA where they talk a lot about this book, or even the R4DS online learning community, where they not only do books like this, but even more than that. I mean, currently right now, I'm doing a data visualization with R um, book club with them at the moment, where I got to present a couple of slides from it. And, and, that's, an, and that's a book that we didn't cover in the program, but it's a book that I wanted to dive into because personally, I love data visualizations. I love ggplot. I love ggspatial. I love all anything that's ggplot related, especially because I just love how cool and just really neat looking the piping operators are, and as well as all this unlimited customization can do with ggplot. I mean, you can change the color of the points. You could um, facet wrap around certain variables. There, you can also do all kinds of plots like violin plots. Even you can even do dumbbell plots as I mentioned earlier all these wonderful plots that people are still coming up with these days it's amazing and if you ever need a place to keep learning R um, I recommend the R3DS online learning community so I'm going to put that link to that community in the description so so feel free to check it out if you want to up your R game and be around a wonderful community of people who 
are all volunteering their time to help each other learn R. As at the end of the day, we all want each of each other to succeed at whatever we're doing, whether it's be a better statistician or better R programmer, a data scientist, whatever that may be. And this is a community that has helped me a lot with learning extra stuff with R. And I'm pretty confident that if you dedicate time to it, it takes a little time out of your day to invest in it. I definitely can guarantee you that it will benefit you as well. So anyway, that's a bit of a kind of example of some things to consider as well. And lastly, I bet there's a question of what's um, next for me? To be honest, I'm still kind of figuring it out myself because while I'm kind of looking around just trying to explore my career options, see where I could go being a stats major, I do have to say this and that wherever I go, I do hope that I do well at wherever I end up at because I think a lot of times one of my biggest fears is that I tend to overthink a lot and I tend to always want certainty out of everything, which is ironic given that I'm a stats major where we always deal with uncertainty, but hear me out. You know, growing up, I've always been very risk adverse because one of the things that I feared a lot, especially in my own life, is making a mistake and being a disappointment or wasting my time on something that's not worth it in the long run. And that's got me to a point where I micromanage my decisions a lot. I would double check my work more than necessary. I mean, you still need to double check, but not to the point where it's your daily obsession. And I also would even just be avoidant and just be very shy and just avoid people out of the fear of just disappointing them or just meeting the wrong people. And I've come to realize that while some of my fears can be reasonable at times, a lot of it can hold me back from actually ex fully living out my potential and also just the joy that comes with learning and the challenges of everyday life. As one of the things that I've come to learn to accept is the fact that you're never going to know what's on the other side. No matter how much knowledge you have, no matter how much education you have and all that, there's always going to be something that you don't know. So the key to, I guess, living a fulfilling life isn't to figure out where you end up or just thinking about the victory successes. It's about figuring out what kind of person that you want to be. And the journey to get there is that's what matters. Because yes, I got my degree, but there's a lot more to it than just simply getting a degree. There's also personal growth. There's also professional growth. There's also the little things like the flowers that are on the side of the road that you get to smell every day. And those flowers could be in many different forms, like all the friends I got to make, all the laughter I got to enjoy, and maybe all these cool classes that I got to try on the side that gave me a different way of appreciating statistics or something, or even some networking opportunities that on the surface may seem useless but actually has impacted my life in a way that you can't measure with numbers or just a finish line or something like that. There's all these ways in which life can enrich you and so I think it's important to know that while we may not know where we end up in the future, let's also remember to think of it as not just a dark void where it's potential for failure, let's also think of it as a world full of possibility. As the future, you don't know that, but the future is also full of possibility. You know, and and, ex and there's that kind of excitement for it, which is what gives life its meaning. So whatever you do, be bold and just be curious. Always stay curious. Always explore. And always go into the unknown for not just, you know, to, and not to think of it as sort of, as a, a a place where you could potentially fail, but think of it as a, as a sort of a, a striving for the potential of success, the possibility of it, and that's what motivates people to really generally do the things they do, even if there's no guarantee that they're going to win. And that's something that you got to have when you're doing something like this, like get a master's in statistics thinking of the possibility of what could happen for you rather 
than what you could fail at, potentially. So, anyway, that's it for this video. I want to say thank you all for listening and watching for all these times I've been posting. I'm probably not going to be doing videos for anytime soon, but we'll have to see, though, as I do want to enjoy my summer vacation and just figure out what my next moves are. But I'll, I'll be around to answer stuff if people have any questions. So anyway, with that said, thank you all for listening. And I hope you all stay tuned for the next vlog, whatever I come back to this. So thank you all. Have a great day and have a good summer.